Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Uh, I'm in the United States now, yay! I've been here for about like 10 days. We released that goodbye video a week after I'd already landed in the United States. So I've been busy getting this set up. So this is my illustrious studio, as you can see. I'll give a studio tour at some point, but uh, it's not quite ready. Everything's not quite set up. I've been working on my wear Woot book for the past week and a half, um, but I'm gonna be building a PC soon and then we'll have like everything properly situated. But this this is just to give you a view, yay. And also I got to pick up actual merch that's amazingly feeling. So if you guys wanna support us in this US transition, you can do that at the link in the video description to pick up our merch. But uh, I think we actually need to make this look a little bit home homier. This, this angle isn't working for me, this uh, wide angle. So I'm gonna get things switched around and then we're gonna jump on into the hot news. First US hot news, yay. Okay, that's more like it. Let's go ahead and jump on into the first article of the day, which is about Intel having to issue a recall for one of their processors. And no, it's not for any of the reasons that you might think, including, you know, a bunch of vulnerabilities, including Spectre and Meltdown and a whole bunch of things going haywire or that way. No, it actually has to do with the fact that they have been cheapening out on their stock coolers. Yes, my friends, the product, the Intel Xeon E2274G has been recalled for an insufficient box cooler. And not only has it been recalled, it has been discontinued or put on end of life. So Intel has not only shelved the product, but then has advised everybody who was selling them to send them back to Intel because for the 88 watt TDP chip, they've been selling it with a stock cooler that's supposed to be used for 65 watts. So you know, what, what's a few watts between friends, my friends? Anyways, this is probably uh, just gonna give fuel to the fire that Intel has indeed been, uh, you know, cheapening out on their stock coolers. In fact, dropping them from their high-end uh, CPUs altogether with the K-series lineup as opposed to AMD, which includes them all the way up to the 3950X gets a stock cooler, whereas Intel could not be bothered to do that. So, I mean, Intel being cheap, is anybody surprised? I, you tell me. First, for us hot news back in the States, it's a little weird, but let's go ahead and jump on into the next one, jumping all over the place. And that is we have information about the code name for Intel's first Project Z GPU, which is going to be Ponte Vecchio, or Vecchio, or friggin' I don't know how to speak Italian, so that's, you read it and tell me how it's pronounced. Anyways, this is not going to be the discrete gaming GPU that everybody's been hoping for, but rather this is supposed to be a data center GPU that instead of being used on PCI Express, is gonna be on Intel's brand new setup, which is the uh, CXL or Compute Express Link. This is an interface that a whole bunch of companies have jumped in on, including NVIDIA and AMD. AMD joined the CXL consortium back in July of of this year, so uh, a whole bunch of companies in on CXL and Intel coming out with the first GPU for that, or at least get us getting the code name for that. But not to let Intel and AMD and Nvidia have all of the server fun, there's a new company starting up called Nuvia. This is coming as a result of three people who are former chip designers over at Apple designing SOCs for them. They came together and said that, hey, now we're gonna start a server company and make chips for server environments. We'll see if this goes anywhere. Obviously, they're probably not going to have x86 licensing like AMD does, so that they'll have to probably use some sort of open source CPU information, but we'll see where it goes. We'll keep you updated. In case you wanted to be kept updated on where the pricing of AMD processors is going, well, it's going down. And in fact, if you want to pick up a first generation Threadripper chip, the eight core 1900X, which admittedly doesn't make a whole lot of sense given it's uh, you know IPC and clock and all of that, but what it does make sense in is you get 64 PCI Express lanes, and then also it's only $150 on Amazon right now. So if you've been eyeing a Threadripper chip and you only needed a few cores, but you need all of that PCI Express bandwidth, 1900X, $150 on Amazon. You can use our affiliate link in the video description, pick one up maybe, potentially, I don't know. But then if you're gonna be looking to pick up another motherboard this coming holiday season, or uh, just cause, Buildzoid just released a massive 47 minute breakdown of 
basically all of the motherboards on PC part picker on EMD's side, breaking them down based on their specs, their VRM layout, and all of that. So if you want to watch that video, we'll leave a link down below in the video description. You can check it out in that type right hand corner. But if you check the pinned comment, just in case you're curious, they have timestamps for all of the motherboards that, that he talks about. So uh, it looks to be dozens upon dozens upon dozens. So you can just quickly search that instead of watching through the entire 47 minute video to find out about your favorite Gigabyte X570 ITX or is Pro. It's, it's apparently at, you know, 18 minutes, 21 seconds. And then last little bit of AMD news, we've got reports that there's a new CPU coming out called the Athlon Gold. It appears to be a new way of differentiating the lower end processors from AMD. Uh, probably not the way Intel does it, where it has Pentium Gold and Pentium Silver, which is just a way to trick consumers into buying crappier CPUs. Hey, it's a Pentium Silver, it must be good. No, you're buying an Atom, an Intel Atom, and those are pieces of crap for normal desktop scenarios. Anyways, AMD is probably not gonna do that. It might just be even a code name, not necessarily something that's gonna be on a retail shelf, but Athlon Gold. Are you excited? And then in case you've been wanting to test out to see how your system handles ray tracing and you only have an RX 580, well, Crytek finally has released their ray tracing benchmark known as Neon Noir. They showcased this, I believe it was back in March of this year, showing us that yes, you can indeed use an AMD graphics card for this. It uses a DX11 API, so basically any graphics card on the face of the planet can technically run it, although they say that the system requirements are a Vega 56 and a GTX 1060. 70 respectively, but in case you wanted to check out your mid tie-in system, you can now do that with the Crytek Neon Noir. And then one of the hottest games that came out this past weekend, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order actually has a lot of benchmarks. If you go over onto Tech Power Up's website, they benchmarked a whole bunch of graphics cards, seeing how it performs on PC and actually at 1080p epic settings, an RX 570 gets a 54 FPS average, which isn't too shabby. And then if you wanna play 4K 60 FPS on the highest settings, you're still gonna need a 2080 Ti, but the game actually looks fairly playable on a respectable system. Have you been playing Fallen Order this weekend? Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. And then BioWare still wants to make Anthem happen. Anthem's never gonna be a thing. Stop trying to make it a thing. But apparently BioWare has plans to revamp Anthem in a big way to kind of save it. Kind of like how Destiny has been working so hard to regain all of the trust that they lost when they were part of Activision. And now that they're free on their own as Bungie again, they're actually bringing a lot of people back. Anthem's still tied to EA. Bioware is going down with the ship, but they're planning a huge thing called Anthem 2.0 or Anthem Next, and it's supposed to be amazing, and you're gonna wanna love to play the game that is highly disappointing, and why wouldn't you just play Destiny instead? I don't know. That's where I'm at. Do you play Anthem? And then another game that everybody was excited for that got announced in our little hot news hiatus, Age of Empires 4 is announced and is going to be coming out. And apparently there's also some discussion regarding the monetization of the game. And this is what Adam Isgreen, the creative director of Age of Empires had to say, the idea of microtransactions in a real time strategy game isn't a thing. DLC expansions, all of that is things we're going to be exploring for Age 4. So microtransactions, at least for now, not coming to Age of Empires 4. But you know what is coming to your Switch? In case you have Pokemon Sword and Shield, potentially, your SD card getting completely wiped. Yes, my friends, there is a glitch that has been discovered with Pokemon Sword and Shield that wipes people's entire SD cards. Uh, this is apparently only happening for people who have their SD cards formatted in the XFAT file system. If you're on FAT32, which is typically used for 32 gigs and less, you're gonna be able, you're just gonna be fine. But for XFAT, it appears that somehow with the way Pokemon's trying to write to the card, it screws everything up and deletes everything. Your save games are apparently stored on the Switch's local memory, so you're not gonna lose your save games, but you will lose your download. So in case you have XFAT file system on your Nintendo Switch, be careful playing Pokemon Sword and Shield, but hopefully Nintendo or Game Freak will rather get this patched quickly. Speaking of getting things patched, Disney Plus launched and The Simpsons, all how many freaking 500 seasons of it are on Disney Plus, and this 
happened to coincide with them completely shutting down Simpsons World, which was an FX-run streaming service for all of Simpsons episodes, uh, a dedicated thing, and they completely shut it down with no notice. It's completely gone. Now you have to transition over to Disney+. Plus. And apparently I found out that the only episode of The Simpsons that's not currently on Disney+, Plus, and they have no plans to, is the episode where there's the fake Michael Jackson who sings, Lisa, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Lisa. Apparently that's too controversial. I don't remember that much. I just remember fake Michael Jackson. You can let me know why that's banned down in the comments. I don't know. But also there's been issues with The Simpsons because they cropped it to 16 by nine instead of the original four by three aspect ratio for some of the older episodes. And that has ruined some of the comedic moments in some of the episodes, such as the one where they're showing that Duff, Duff Light and Duff Dry all come from the same tube. In the 16 by nine, it's cropped off so that you can't actually see it. So you don't get the joke. Disney's got to ruin everything. They said that they're going to fix it and you can watch it in four by three next year. Okay, no, not right now. They got a whole bunch of other things to worry about and people watching The Simpsons just isn't one of them. In case you're worried about foldable phones, well, they're coming back. The Motorola Razr was announced while we were taking a little break to move across the entire world. Well, now the Huawei Mate X foldable smartphone has gone on sale in China. No word on when it's gonna come to other regions, but currently it's sailing for the equivalent of 2,400 US dollars, 5G capable, flappy, hinges, all that good stuff, and the brittleness of a osteoporosis octogenarian. It's fantastic. Which is also the way Xbox feels about their hopes on the next generation console when it comes to making sure that they're competitive this time around, because when the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 launched, not only were they $100 more expensive, they were also slower. And Phil Spencer of Xbox has come out and said that, we, oh, we're not making that same mistake twice, my friends. No, 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 no. We're gonna make sure that for the performance we're giving, we're priced competitively. Hopefully, there's really no performance difference between the two consoles because there probably really won't be since it's all determined by AMD and they're both working closely with AMD to design custom SOCs, whatever. Um, but pricing will be okay. Speaking of pricing, if you bought a Tesla Model 3 in any time in the last year, you got tremendous value for your money because apparently with the latest update of version 10, also known as 2019.36.2, there is performance enhancements that are coming out to the Model 3 giving 5% better performance, which is leading to faster zero to 60 times than what was originally quoted by Tesla with their cars. The Tesla Model 3 performance, the top range one, uh, for example, example was debuted at a 3.5 second 0 to 60 and now with the latest update is running at 2.99 seconds 0 to 60 under three seconds for a the freaking amazing car so all of the all of the tesla model threes receiving performance increases crazy fast speed Speaking of crazy fast speed, that's what Google Stadia is gonna bring you for your uh, gaming experience. In case you don't have a console or a gaming PC, you can just sit on your couch and you play everything at high resolution, and high frame rate. Anyway, stadia.com has gone live. If you go to stadia.google.com, you will see that you can now at least access the website. They've launched that, but then also they've updated their shipping notifications. And in fact, we've got an updated shipping notification on ours. It appears that Google's now charging people for their pre-orders and they're gonna be begin shipping them out. Fortunately, even though I only ordered mine in September when I realized it was moving back to the United States, I'm gonna be getting it in one of the first batches. It says that my delivery date is either Thursday or Friday, and Google stated that they will be shipping all of the Stadias out on Monday to make sure that they meet the launch date of the 19th, which is tomorrow. So I probably won't get it in the initial launch date, but I won't have to wait up to two weeks as was originally indicated with the pre-orders. And then lastly, let's close it out with a little weird one. There's a rare genetic condition that has given a man what is known as the Eye of Sauron look in his eyeball because as scientists have put it, his circumferential spoke like iris translumination defects, which is basically little flakes of his iris getting caught in his eye and then increasing pressure, which is how he noticed he needed to go with the doctor, was his eye had too much pressure. I don't like that. And apparently that damages the optic nerves. Anyways, you can see the image when they shine the light in. Ah, Sauron, this dude's evil. Don't don't trust him. And don't, don't trust me to continue this episode of Hot News any longer because I'm gonna be done with that one. The first episode of Hot News in the United States is now complete. Thank you all so much for uh, 
continuing on this journey with us. Obviously, it's been a, a tough one with my son's rare, rare genetic disorder causing us to move back, but we've gone to several doctors. We're getting the care for him that we need. Obviously, I have a YouTube studio that I'm working on, and then uh, the UFD team will be hopefully joining us at the beginning of the year and we'll move into an actual YouTube space. This is just a spare bedroom in the house that we're renting. So big thanks for everybody who's left kind words of encouragement, uh, who's supported us through this, anybody who's given us thoughts, prayers. It's really all appreciated. Everybody who's picked up some hot, fresh merch. Check out this Mobo Diamond. I love it so much. And the Teespring t-shirts are soft. I didn't realize how good they would be, but they were waiting for me when I arrived here and I love them. You should buy one as well. Use the link in the video description. And everybody who supported us on Patreon, on Floatplane, it's meant the world to us. I wanted to ask you guys, okay, so we have the like sound blanket background that's going on here with just some lights, but then we have the option of a green screen and we could put whatever we want behind me and that could be the background. So weird sound blanket for now or a green screen. And then Catlin gets to decide in editing what she wants to put back there and Hopefully it's something family friendly. I don't know, because she's in South Africa and she could literally put whatever she wants there. Yikes. Um, sound off, green screen or sound blanket? In the comments, I'm out of here. Look how close you get. How warped my face becomes. Look at my nose.